In this demonstration, you'll learn how to assess a reacting flow through a can combustor typically found in land-based gas turbines. To determine performance, I'm interested in describing the loss of total pressure through the combustor, the increase in total temperature, and the portion of unburned fuel remaining as it leaves the combustor. Fluent automatically displays the mesh after loading. The can combustor comprises three inlet regions, a large volume, and a single outlet. Compressed air enters the combustor through the main inlet at the base and mixes with pure methane injected through a series of fuel inlets. Small guide vanes swirl the incoming fresh air to promote mixing with the methane fuel, increasing its overall efficiency. As the reaction proceeds through the canister, additional fresh air is injected through secondary inlets to promote further mixing and reaction while also cooling off the walls of the can. In this case, I'll consider the combustion reaction to be kinetically controlled by turbulent diffusion and model it using the eddy dissipation model. I'll start by selecting the standard K-epsilon turbulence model, which will be used to determine the rate of turbulent mixing. The reacting air-fuel mixture comprises multiple chemical components, and the local composition will change as fuel mixes with air. Enabling species transport allows me to track these components and determine the local composition. To include the reaction in the canister, I'll enable volumetric reactions, pick a predefined mixture material for methane air, and set the turbulence chemistry interaction to eddy dissipation. The eddy dissipation model computes the reaction under the assumption that chemical kinetics are fast compared to the rate at which reactants are mixed by turbulent fluctuations. Now that I've defined the combustion reaction and flow, I need to specify the boundary conditions for the simulation. Starting with the fuel inlet, Methane will enter at a velocity of 40 meters per second. I'll set the methane component fraction to 1 and set the temperature of the fuel to 300 Kelvin. Air will be entering the primary inlet at 10 meters per second. The air will be 23% oxygen by mass. The other 77% is composed of the constrained species, which is nitrogen in this mixture. The temperature of the air entering at this boundary will be 300 Kelvin. Air will be entering the secondary air inlet at 6 meters per second. Again, the air will be 23% oxygen by mass, and the balance is made up of nitrogen. The temperature of the air entering here is 300 Kelvin. At the outlet, I'll specify an average static gauge pressure of 0 pascals. There's no need to specify the temperature or composition of gases leaving the domain, as these will be determined by what happens upstream. However, if the upstream fluid pressure is lower than zero pascals, fluid will enter at the outlet. This backflow is essentially an inlet, so values can be provided if this occurs while solving. These settings ensure that the backflow will be composed of pure nitrogen entering at 300 Kelvin, which has no risk of contributing to the reactions. The average pressure specification keeps the total force on the boundary constant, while the local static pressure is allowed to vary naturally. The remaining boundaries are the veins and walls lining the combustor, which I'll leave as stationary, no-slip adiabatic walls. While the solver is running, a plot of the equation residuals is automatically printed to the console, which indicates the extent of solution convergence. In addition to residuals, it's helpful to monitor something that will indicate how the solution is proceeding. In this case, I would like to monitor the relative amount of CO2 that is exiting the outlet boundary. It should eventually settle to a constant value, and it's also something that I'm interested in knowing. To do this, I'll set up the surface report definition, which will record the mass-weighted average of CO2 exiting at the outlet after each solver iteration. I'll have these results printed to the console. Now I'll specify the solver controls and solution methods. These are purely numerical controls affecting how the equations are solved, for the most robust behavior, I'll use the coupled scheme and enable pseudo-transient and high-order term relaxation. This combination will arrive at a solution in fewer iterations, although the time needed for each iteration is a bit longer. The species transport and energy changes due to reactions tend to evolve a bit slowly, so it's best to solve these equations using an inflated timescale factor. This will ensure that the solution reaches a steady state within a reasonable number of solver iterations. A global timescale factor of 5 will also help accelerate the solution. 300 iterations should be sufficient to reach an adequate level of convergence. The concentration of CO2 exiting the combustor has reached a steady, positive value. The plots describing the called residuals show that the solution has converged to a steady state. 
Now I'll skip ahead to show you some post-processing of the results. Here I've inserted a plane and created a plot of the mass fraction of CO2 in the combustion chamber. You can create mass fraction plots of any species involved, such as oxygen or methane. And here is a plot showing the temperature variations on the surface of the aluminum combustor shell. This concludes this demonstration showing you how to model a reacting flow in a can combustor.